Hi, I'm Nico Lee, Programs and Engagements Manager at New York Chinese Culture Center. Today, you will be watching a program that tells us a little bit about the Dragon Boat Festival, Duan Wu Jie. You will also be seeing a few dance pieces performed with drums. The selected choreographies are with inspiration for the importance of drums in Chinese culture, traditions, and dance. Growing up in China, I was always excited about the Duan Wu Jie when I was a little kid. Not only I get to watch my mom making sticky rice dumplings, but my father would also put a five-color string bracelet on my wrist for a wish of a long and healthy life. Dragon Boat Festival, also called Duan Wu Festival, is a traditional holiday observed annually over 2,000 years in China to commemorate Qu Yuan, an ancient Chinese patriotic poet. Originated from South China, Dragon Boat Festival enjoys higher popularity in southern areas such as Jiangsu, Zhejiang, Guangdong, and Fujian provinces. It's my pleasure to introduce Lu Qijiang, a calligraphy teaching artist at the New York Chinese Culture Center. Lu Qi will tell you a little more about the festival, show you how Chinese characters evolve in calligraphy writing, as well as a short demonstration of calligraphy writing of a beautiful ancient poem about the festival. Hi everyone, my name is Luci. Today I'm going to talk about a very important traditional festival coming in June by calligraphy, uh, which is the Dragon Boat Festival, also called the Duan Wu Festival. Now it has evolved into a special occasion that people would get together, have fun, um, and to cherish um, the season. So the Dragon Boat Festival is on the May 5th of the lunar calendar, which will be on the June 25th this year. So here I uh, wrote down Wu Yue Chu Wu, the fifth month and the fifth day, and it's called um, Duan Wu Jie, so we say Happy Dragon Boat Festival. Duan Wu Jie, Kuai Le. And it's a festival usually said to memorize a great poet called Qu Yuan, living in more than 2,000 years ago. So um, he was very loyal, talented, uh, patriotic. So in order to remember him, uh, remember his talent, his patriotism, uh, people just set up this festival, the May 5th of the lunar calendar. Um, so here is the Happy Dragon Boat Festival. So, what would people do during the Dragon Boat Festival? So here, um, I've written down the traditional customs of the Dragon Boat Festival. Duan Wu Xi Su. So let's look at them. Number one, as you can tell from the name, Dragon Boat, right? So it's definitely related to boats. So at the festival, people will do the boat racing, but the boat they use is really special. It's in the shape of dragon. So we will call it Sai Long Zhou, the boat racing, um, and which will be very spectacular because people will do it on the river and then you can hear those yelling and those um, claps. So we call it Sai Long Zhou. And number two, which is also my favorite, people will eat rice dumpling, Chi Zong Zi. And number three, people will uh, carry the sachet, uh, which they believe that can drive away the bad fortune and can bring them health, peace, and happiness. And we call it Pei Xiang Nang, uh, carrying sachet. So uh, these are the main activities people will do during the festival, but also they will drink some special wine called Xiong Huang Jiu, and also they will hang some herbs at their house uh, to ward off the evil. I have some zongzi and sashi. So here is the zongzi, so inside is the rice. 
and also I have some sachet. Um, I this one I have the lavender inside, so people will carry this sachet uh, during the festival, and so they think that this can bring them good fortune, health, and peace. And now we are going to talk more in detail about the activities, the dragon boats racing and eating rice dumpling. So first, let's look at the character, dragon. Um, the Chinese writing is from drawing and it was invented more than 4,000 years ago by a half human, half god figure called Chang Jie. So as you see here, so you can see how the character evolved. So originally it was just drawing. So here you can just see like people just try to um, to copy what they observe. So here you can see this, um, the body, the body of the dragon, um, although dragon is actually imaginary. And then you can see the long curving tail. So these are the most ancient form of the character dragon. And it was carved on the oracle bones, on the turtle shells, on bronze. So we call them um, the oracle bone scripts, jia gu wen, and also the bronze scripts, jing wen. Then so, and they existed more than 3,000 years ago. And then after a few hundred years, the character changed. It became something like this. And this one, we call it um, Zhuan Shu, the seal script. So um, here you can see this is the Da Zhuan, and this is called the Xiao Zhuan, the great seal script and the small seal script. So um, yeah, you can tell that it becomes like more readable and less like the drawing because you see the less curving um, strokes. And Actually, this, this dial is still used now. So now, if you want to make your personal seal, uh, you will still carve this dial of character on at the bottom of your seal. And so we call it the seal script. After another hundreds of years, the character change again. So here, first, let's look at this one. So this one we call it Li Shu, the clerical style. It's also the style the first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, uh, used it to unite the writing of the country. Um, so this style um, is famous for the special structure of this joke. Um, so if you look closer, you can see this joke. It has like sort of the silk warm head and the swallow tail, and we call it the clerical script, and it marks the transformation from the Asian style um, to the modern one. And then, after hundreds of years, the as society change, the writing change too. So here we see this style. It's called the cursive style. So you see that all the, the strokes just link to each other and some strokes are left out. So this is cursive style. And this is the style that with which you have to write the character the fastest way, as fast as you can. And so we have this cursive style. We also have the semi-cursive style. And this style is also called the rolling style. So this cursive style in Mandarin is called Cao Shu. And this style, it gets a bit lower than the cursive style in Mandarin is called Xing Shu. And it got so famous by the great calligrapher Wang Xichi, and he has work called the number one um, running style in the world. So this one is the running style. And then at the Tang Dynasty, this style is called Kai Shu, um, the regular script or the regular style, also called the normal style, the square style. It got fully developed in the Tang Dynasty. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is style that you can see the most commonly um, from the publication, from TV, and it's also the style that people use it most frequently now, and this one. And the one below it is the simple 
1956, the mainland China uh, started to use the simplified characters. So now we have two versions of the dragon. Uh, one is the traditional one, and the other one is the simplified one. So if you look at the evolution of the character, you can see that actually um, the trend is that it just becomes more and more simplified and more and more readable. Then this is the evolution of the character Dragon Long. And next, we are going to talk about food, the rice dumpling. Um, so I think Chinese characters are very interesting because you can actually tell the way of making rice dumpling from the character. So let's look at it. So this is the activity, 吃粽子, eating rice dumpling. And so um, the Chinese characters are made of different parts, like jigsaw puzzle. And you, so like, let's look at this one. So here you have the radical, the rice radical. And then here you have these parts that represent the sound. So, so if you have the rice radical and the zong part, this part represents the pronunciation, then you will have a new character, zong. Um, so even though that you know nothing about the zone, you never heard of it, but if you know the rice radical and you know the pronunciation part of zone, then you can get the hand of the new character, zone, uh, which is also the magic of Chinese character. And since the Dragon Ball Festival is in the memory of great poems, so I think it's really pertinent to write a poem um, to celebrate this festival. So um, in the following section, I'm going to uh, show the writing of a poem about Duan Wu, about the Dragon Ball Festival, written by another great poem, also uh, a great calligrapher, Su Dongbo. I finished the writing of the poem. Um, this poem is called Huan Xi Shang Duan Wu uh, by Su Shi. Su Shi is a great poet and also a great calligrapher um, living in the Song Dynasty more than 1,000 years ago. So I'm gonna read this poem. Um, Qing Han Wei Wei Tou Bi Wan Ming Zhao Duan Wu Yu Fang Lan, Liu Xiang Zhang Ni, Man Qing Chuan, Tai Xian Qing Chan Hong Yu Bi, Xiao Fu Xie Gua Yu Yun Huan, Jia Ren Xiang Jian Yi Qian Nian. So when you are reading the traditional Chinese, the order is that you have to read it top down and um, from right to left. And I picked this poem uh, because it's very beautiful. And also I found that although it was written by a male poet, I found it's really quite, um, it's quite feministic because it vividly portray uh, women's activities during the Dragon Ball Festival. Um, so it tells us that um, how women prepare for the festival. They take a bath, 
uh, they dress up, they wear bracelets, um, and they enjoy themselves. And it's also a poem, uh, Su Donghuo, who Su Shi uh, wrote uh, to his wife, Zhao Yun. So it's a poem about the Dragon Bow Festival, but it's also a love letter um, to his wife. And I hope you enjoy it. Drum dances are part of traditional Chinese folklore and are commonly seen on various Chinese festival occasions. Take Dragon Boat Festival as an example. Drums are the spirit of the team during boat racing, which is one of the key activities people do to celebrate Duan Wu Festival. Today, you will hear some behind-the-scenes stories on both dance pieces by the involved choreographers, dancers, students, and New York Chinese Cultural Center. Please enjoy. Uh, for, for our drum dance, it makes this uh, Japanese taiko and uh, Korean nunkak drum style. I can share the story how to create this piece. Uh, that's in 2006, uh, Kong'an University of Korea come to my college, Beijing Dance Academy, to perform. Their last piece is a very powerful dynamic uh, Korea Nunkak drum. And uh, one year later, in 2007, we went to Korea to perform with them together. Uh, we had opportunity to rehearse with them in the studio. And uh, uh, we can see their drum dance closer. And after we go back to China, uh, two years later, when we start to prepare our uh, graduation performance, uh, my college teacher, Miss Su, decided to have a drum piece to close our show. And uh, she found a drum teacher in uh, Beijing to teach us this uh, drum piece. After three, uh, three years uh, later, I bring it to our DCNY to perform again. So we, we made a triangle like a trail to perform this piece. Um, in, the drum is very important in Chinese cultivation culture. A lot of ethnic uh, group has the drum dance for celebration, uh, good heart This drum dance is very different compared to the drum dance I did before. The first thing is the size of the drum. In Chinese folk dance, we usually use a drum called yao gu. It's about this size big, and then it has two drum faces on each side of the drum. And you use a red string to go attach the drum and put it on your shoulder, and the string go around your waist, and you stabilize the yao gu, the drum, right next to your hip, and you dance with it. And for grand drum dance, we actually have to use a very big drum that have to be put it on a drum stand and push around on the stage to move the drum because it's so heavy. And that drum only have one drum face on the top. The second difference is the music of the dance. In the old drum dance that I performed before, we use the music that's already choreographed. It's, uh, you just have to play. And then you, as a dancer, you follow the music and you use the drum as a prop for your dance. But for grand drum dance, you actually have to be a musician. You have to dance and perform your own music for the dance. I, I think I find myself very challenging because I am the only uh, female in this dance piece and then I um, dance along with these two amazing male dancers have lots of energy you know and I need to make sure that my uh, energy level the powerful energy level is uh, to their uh, standard as well. I was so excited to hear from Brent that he's going to teach us this drum piece because as a dancer, I never uh, play any instrument before. So for me, it's very exciting to, you know, play your own music on the stage and also dance with your own music that you're playing. It's challenging because um, you have to make sure you play all the music 
it's on the right beat, not only for you, but also for your dance partner. And personally, I really love the sound of the big drum because it's so powerful. I love the energy. So it's, I was so excited, nervous, and um, looking forward to do the dance with drum, with drum and with grin.
Thank you, Grant and Jesse, for introducing such a powerful piece with us. This again reminds us how critical drums are on occasions like the Dragon Ball Festival. Next, you will be introduced to another type of drum dance. As Jesse mentioned, aside from the large single face drums, there are also drums called Yao Gu. This next piece incorporates the traditional Yao Gu as well as long drum tassels. You will also be introduced to the choreographer Bei Bei Gu and three students who performed in this piece. Please enjoy the drum tassel dance. 这个长水花鼓呢，是中国大连地区的特别的一个有民族特色的舞蹈。一九七六年，我们上海歌舞团接受了出访欧洲的四国的那个演出任务，所以呢，我们向大连歌舞团学习了这个舞蹈。this long tassel drum dance is an ethnic dance that originates from Dalian, China. In 1976, I, together with my fellow dancers from the Shanghai Song and Dance Company, were invited to travel to Europe to perform. For that reason, we learned this piece under the guidance and instruction of dancers from the Dalian Song and Dance Company. 它集中了舞蹈的语汇，还有杂技、技巧等等各方面的那个因素在里面，是一个非常具挑战、很难学的一个舞蹈。This piece focuses on many different areas such as dance vocabulary, acrobatics technique, and much more. It is because of all these factors that makes learning the stance extremely challenging and difficult. The most challenging aspect of this dance is that the sound of the drum is not created when the dancers hit the drum directly with the drumsticks, but rather with the small ball affixed to the end of the long tassels. This technique and skill comes only with practice. In the beginning, it's very challenging to make contact with the drum face. With the students that you will see in this piece, at first I wasn't sure if they would be up for such a challenge because they have never learned or experienced anything like this before. However, I was very pleasantly surprised. One cannot imagine the process of learning this dance and how much of a challenge it is until you experience it for yourself. They are my pride and joy. I hope you enjoy watching it. Hi everyone, my name is Susanna Dolan and I've been a student at the New York Chinese Cultural Center for 20 years. One word that comes to mind when I think of the drum tassel dance is discipline. Aside from the movements and techniques required to execute this dance, one of the most important aspects is the sound that the tassel makes when it hits the drum. In order to do so, the tassel needs to be at a certain momentum and direction in order for the sound to be the most effective. Because of this, our teacher was generous enough to spend her summer vacation with us teaching us. I'd like to thank our teacher, Gu Lasher, for her continued hard work, dedication, and wisdom. I would also like to thank my fellow dancers, classmates, and friends for tackling this challenging dance together. 
To this day, the drum tassel dance has been the most challenging yet memorable dance that I have learned at the New York Chinese Cultural Center. Hi, my name is Katrina Bernhardt and I've been dancing with the New York Chinese Cultural Center for 20 years. I remember learning this traditional drum tassel dance almost 10 years ago now and I think what sets this dance apart from others is the key importance of synchronization in order to successfully perform the piece. This dance requires precision of timing and also involves consistent transitions between high energy and power to hit the drum and make a noise and then low energy to smoothly transition as these long tassels fly through the air. I remember spending some time in my backyard practicing with these long tassels to achieve these new skills of manipulating the tassels as we twirled them through the air, trying to keep them from tangling with each other, and then eventually in the class also to prevent them from tangling with everyone else's tassels too. And so from this dance I really learned um, how important the synchronization with the music and with everyone else dancing in the group would be in order to avoid a whole big tangly mess. Hi, I'm Tiffany and I've been dancing with the New York Chinese Cultural Center since 2001. Over the years, I've had the privilege of learning the drum tassel dance from Bei Bei Gu and it's easily one of the most unique pieces I've ever learned. This dance combines Chinese dance technique with drumming, so we're drumming not only with our drumsticks but also with the tassels. And a lot of time was spent practicing our drum placements, our hand placements, to make sure that the tassels actually made contact with the drums, in addition to perfecting the dance movements. This dance was very challenging and taxing, and I walked away from many classes with bruises from all those times my tassel missed the drums, but it was definitely worth it. It taught me a lot about discipline and hard work, and I'm really glad we get to share this piece with audiences all over the U.S. This is a piece that I have not seen any other dance group perform, so it's definitely a privilege to be able to share this with everyone. And I hope our audiences enjoy watching this piece as much as my friends and I enjoyed learning and performing it.
all for celebrating the Dragon Bow Festival with us. Through the selected visual and performative art forms, we hope that we were able to introduce you to the traditions, cultural aspects, and history associated with the holiday. Thank you again for joining us and happy Dragon Boat Festival. 端午节快乐。<laughs>